So here's the here's the system up and running. Um, it's it's just a, a little bodged together wiring at the moment. Um, you can see the fans going, um, which means I have uh, power to the whole system. Um, you've got here you can see the red flashing light on the drives. Uh, that means that they're not receiving a signal. Um, it was I can't seem to actually find that in the manual, but uh, I've deduced that from having one wired up. Um, you've got uh, on the bob here uh, I've wired up uh, just a single a single uh, inductive sensor uh, at 12 volts it's a normally closed sensor so uh, although it's on it's on the home which would be normally open I've wired up and normally closed uh, the reason being there just in case I wired up something incorrectly um, I didn't care too much if I blew up one of my uh, limit sensors because I've got loads of them um, but I did mind if I blew up a, one of my home sensors um, so there it is anyway uh, the reason I was worried I might blow it up because the wiring diagram on the side of the sensor is so tiny uh, I actually thought the bit that's in uh, English, or, or at least uh, uh, English font, I thought was in Chinese. It is that tiny, I, I couldn't see it. I had to get the magnifying glass out to see it. Anyway, so I've got uh, that wired up to the 12, uh, pin, what's that, 11 and a ground. Um, and I, I expected, there's a, a small, there is a, a tiny LED. Uh, on the board and I expected that to light up uh, and it didn't. Now I suspect it's not because uh, the e-stop is activated uh, because it's in test mode but uh, the sensor itself over here, I don't know if you can see that, uh, has a, an LED on it and the LED indicates that the, that the switch is closed so if you can get a better, there you go so you can see the, the red LED and if I bring some steel towards it, see it goes out. So uh, hopefully we can get an idea, Let's get, get a tape measure or a ruler. Uh, the, so the tip of the sensor is at 10 millimeters, and I'll bring this down. Yeah, it's a bit hard to measure. I'll, ha I'll probably have to do this off camera. So there you go. Yeah, I would say that's about four millimeters. Let's see if I can get a better, a better shot of that. There you go. That's that's the point where it's just about. Yeah, I'd say that's that's four millimeters, and actually, that feels very, very reproducible. Um, I'll, I'll I'll get a better setup. In fact, I might even build something to to in, to increase, so I can measure that. Yeah, so that that's the limit. Hmm, I'm impressed. They're, they're a nice little sensor. But now I've, now I've proved that's working, um, what I'll do is uh, remove this wiring, because uh, that was just temporary anyway, and I'll wire it up to, to, um, to the appropriate socket there. And then, obviously, it's uh, just a matter of wiring it into the rest of the machine. So there we go, the first inductive sensor working. I mentioned earlier that these sensors will trigger against steel um, and that they'll also trigger against aluminium. Now, uh, depending on the metal that you're using as the, the trigger or the, the block that you're sensing against, it will depend on how far the sensor has to be from the, the metal 
uh, in order for it to be triggered. Uh, that's to do with the way that currents are induced in metal. Uh, so, and it, it's quite easy to induce a current in steel. And it's much more difficult in metals like aluminium. Uh, the, the physics behind it is quite complicated. Um, uh, I once studied chemistry and I, I understand the basics, but um, I don't pretend to understand all of it. Uh, but uh, here's a, a lump of steel. And if I can get that lined up for you, you'll see. So we've got about half a finger's width to, to trigger the sensor. So if I can get that a bit closer, the trouble is you need to be able to see the light and the sensor. Yeah, it's, back. it's probably better there. So steel steel's pretty good I mean there's I'd say that's pretty much exactly the uh, what their sensor reports of four millimeters um, just by eye I'm gonna get a, a set up on this I think and, and actually bring it in and accurately measure that but I would say that's four millimeters I've also got a lump of steel uh, a lump of aluminium this is uh, I think it's six mil thick and this is part of the box section I'm going to be using for the gantry. Uh, now, let's see if I can get that lined up. And bring that in. There you go. And so it's it sensed it. But that's, that's considerably closer. I would say that's 2 millimeters. I seem to remember from the spec it was 2 millimeters for aluminium. But it, it's significantly closer. Um, now I thought, while I'm at it, I might as well see what other uh, uh, other metals I've got. And so here, this is a, a marking gauge for wood, uh, and it's brass. And slightly better than aluminium. I'd say. Yeah, it, it may be a tiny bit better than aluminium. Two and a half mil, three mil maybe. Uh, I've got another lump of brass here. Um, you get various different grades of, and mixes because of course brass is an alloy. So uh, some some may work better. This is of course a round section so it's not going to detect as well. But it's, it's, it's the same. If anything it's slightly closer but that could just be the, the round profile. Um, that's part of a shower tap. Um, Copper, I can't. I haven't got any copper plate, um, so uh, this is just a bit of 15 mil copper pipe. Now that's a lot closer, but again, it's a round section, so it, probably that's about the same as the brass, which is not entirely surprising. And just for comparison, uh, here's my roll of solder, it's 6040 solder, and you can see that's the same. In fact, that's actually surprisingly far. That's, I would say that's getting on for four mil. So, uh, it's about the same as the steel. Uh, I think, uh, all things considered, I'll, I'll use the steel. Um, because it, it's pretty simple to just put a piece of steel uh, as a target for the sensor, um, and I've, I've got a few scraps lying around, and it, it just it gives you that extra couple of millimeters to to be absolutely sure that you're going to sense it. But there you go. So you can use anything if you want. Another little bit of a, a modification as I go along, as, a, as I'm finding issues. Um, <clears throat> these are the cables for the bob. Um, they would normally go in here, and I've got this this cable here, which is for the uh, 70 volt uh, meter that tells me the, the voltage coming out of the the stepper power supply. Um, I've just temporarily moved them out of the way uh, because I'm going to have to fit this down in here. Um, basically, I don't, I don't have enough space in this tray around here 
um, to fit all the wires I need. Uh, so uh, I might as well fit this now while I'm here, and it's uh, while there's it's still fairly free down there. Um, I'm going to err on the side of caution because um, I know nothing else will come out of the power supply. So I'm going to uh, attempt to place it as far across towards the power supply as I can, and it will make the the cables for the bob a little bit neater because they'll be able to run in that tray <coughs> and I should then be able to get good access um, to, to these um, they'll run this way round instead of going this way round um, now all the rest of my uh, trunking system is I don't know if you can see just down here it's all screwed in uh, which yeah that's that's the, the best way of doing it, um, you can see you've got here, uh, you've got your connection points. Um, but this one, just if I wanted to screw it in, I would have to, well it's not uh, screwed, it's bolted in. Um, if I wanted to bolt this piece in, then I'd have to lift this metal plate up again. Now I can do that um, with a bit of effort. I can unbolt it and let me see if I can show you down just down here is the bolt and there's a there's also one up there and obviously one's in the other corner if I take them out which is not an easy task then I can just about lift this end and I could probably drill there and yeah with some effort I could probably just about get some bolts in um, but I really don't feel like that much hard work today, so I'm going to hot melt glue it. <laughs> uh, I know, terrible, but um, what can you do?